it's Thomas here, and today we're doing a quick review on the Tunes RO water controller. If you burn through DI resin a little bit faster than you think you should, or even a lot faster, this little device can help. One of the absolute basics of reef keeping is starting with clean water. Tap water often has chlorine, chloramine, and other dissolved solids like copper and iron that can build up in our reef tanks to toxic levels quite quickly. And most reefers out there use RODI or reverse osmosis water that's also been deionized, which often tests at zero total dissolved solids or TDS, meaning nothing but pure H2O. While some of us buy RODI water from our local fish stores or water depots, many reefers like myself are running RODI units at home since it tends to be more economical. Especially if you have a larger reef tank or even a smaller reef with high evaporation and frequent water changes. Making RODI in small five gallon batches every day or every other day can get pretty tedious. So having a large brood container or reservoir with a float switch connected to a pressure switch on the RODI filter is a common setup for making sure large volumes of RODI water are readily available without any real effort. Although this setup is really common, it can lead to what's known as TDS creep, which will prematurely burn out your DI resin, which means more frequent changes of DI resin in order to maintain that zero TDS we talked about, which can get really costly over time. Basically what happens is every time you run your RODI filter, the membrane soaks up the majority of the dissolved solids before that water heads to the DI resin and into your reservoir. When the RODI filter is shut off, the water that's left in the membrane housing has a lower TDS than the water inside the actual membrane itself. The water wants to find an equilibrium, so dissolved solids from the membrane leach out into the product water inside of the housing, which can cause the TDS of the water sitting in that housing to raise significantly. For some people, it might only be 10 TDS, and for others, it could be 100 TDS or higher. The next time you turn on the RODI unit, all of that concentrated high TDS water that's in the housing is immediately sent into the DI resin, which is gonna deplete it faster. Now, if you consider that the float valve in your reservoir only has to move a very short distance to activate your RODI filter, that means you might actually be producing very small amounts of water at a time. For example, if your reservoir is 50 gallons, but you often only take out five gallons at a time, your RODI will only be running long enough to produce that five gallons, and that initial burst of high TDS water from the membrane housing ends up going through the DI resin more frequently than if you were to use up all 50 gallons of water in the reservoir and then replace all 50 gallons, which would mean you'd run the RODI filter 10 times less often, meaning 10 times less TDS creep. Well, that is exactly what the Tunes RO water controller is designed to do. In the box, you'll find the Tunes RO water controller with attached sensors, the water control valve, the power adapter, and the installation brackets. Instead of using just a single float valve, the RO water controller gives you two float switches, one for the lowest point in the reservoir and one for the highest point. The RO controller will only turn on your RODI filter once the water has reached the lowest sensor, and then it'll automatically shut it off when it reaches the highest sensor, which will dramatically cut down on TDS creep, which if you burn through a lot of DI resin, is gonna save you on DI resin. And let me tell you, one of the most expensive medias on an RODI filter is the DI resin. Save some money. Another benefit of using the RO water controller is allowing the RODI filter to reach peak efficiency since RODI filters actually become more efficient when they run for longer periods of time. So not only do you save on DI resin, but you'll actually be running your entire RODI unit as a whole more efficiently. Personally, I would have loved to see optical sensors on this unit, and I'd still keep my float switch as a backup just in case the mechanical float switches on the tunes were to fail and allow the RO filter to keep running. Even though that's pretty unlikely since RO reservoirs are full of ultra pure clean water and there is virtually no chance of any debris or algae building up on the float switches, it's just nice to have that added redundancy. To set it up with the float valve as a backup, the float switch at the top of the reservoir should be just below the float valve so it can shut off the water prior to the float valve closing the RO line. The mounting bracket for the float switches are a really good option for a thin walled reservoir that's relatively shallow, but if you use tall containers like a brute barrel, you'll either need to silicone the brackets to the inside of the barrel top and bottom as per the instructions in the tunes manual, or pick up magnetic holders to get down to the bottom of that brute container. For those who make small batches of RODI water or who don't have space for a larger reservoir, another option is to back flush the membrane every time you run the unit. 
By back flushing the membrane, all the high TDS water in the membrane housing is pushed out through the wastewater line, making sure it does not go through the DI resin. You can either get a manual back flush kit or even a fully automated one with the use of an auto flush flow restrictor. Now, if your goal is ultimate efficiency of your RDI filter for long-term savings, you can utilize both the RO water controller for reaching a peak efficiency in conjunction with the automatic back flushing of the membrane to eliminate TDS creep while also extending membrane life. This setup is an excellent option for anybody who goes through loads of RDI water and wants to get every last drop of mileage possible out of their RDI filter while keeping it hands off. Once you've got your TDS creep under control, the next logical question is, do I run my DI resin in a mixed bed or do I split it up into two separate containers and which of those options is going to save me the most on replacement costs? Ryan's got the answer for you right here. It's a good one. Have a look. Changed how I run DI resin. Absolutely did.